Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I took about a week off for some vacation and Valentine's Day celebration. Uh, so thank you for your patience uh, waiting for the next video. And before getting into dosing for the tank, I, I just wanted to send out a heartfelt thank you to everyone who's been watching and leaving some, some very, very nice comments in YouTube and elsewhere. I'm really grateful for everyone's enthusiasm and it's just kind of a nice reminder of why I love reefers in the first place. <laughs> just the kind of people they are and, and their passion and enthusiasm. So uh, makes me feel good about sharing with you guys. Thanks again. So surprise, surprise, I'm making some dosing containers here, <laughs> starting with some acrylic and just scoring the acrylic like you've seen me do before so I can bend it with a heat gun. This is the largest dosing container we're gonna make, and this is for good old Kalkwasser. And there seems to be kind of a resurgence in the last couple years of, of people discovering or rediscovering how simple and effective Kalkwasser can be. And that's definitely the case, especially in the beginning stages of an aquarium, when you don't have a lot of calcium and alkalinity uptake, it can really hold its own, and the pH boost is great as well. The one piece of advice I would give you is to put it on a doser and dose it uh, in a metered, quantifiable way. Avoid dosing it via your automatic top-off reservoir uh, because your evaporation rate can fluctuate and can vary based on the time of the year. So putting it on a doser and dosing it like you would a two-part or something else uh, that you can adjust and monitor is a much better way to do it. And each of the dosing containers I'm making will have essentially this little window, which will allow me just to, to see the, the liquid level inside and know when I need to refill it. The progression of dosing for calcium and alkalinity that I will probably follow in this tank will be starting with Kalkwasser, um, adding two part, probably still dosing Kalkwasser at that point, and then adding a calcium reactor. And we're gonna kind of see how that goes, the coral load and, and everything will kind of determine when I make those transitions, but that's, that's kind of the plan at this point. The other two things that I'm gonna be dosing right from the get-go will be nitrate and phosphate. And that may sound a little strange to some people, but what that will do is create uh, instantly a baseline stable level of those nutrients. During a time in the beginning stages of a tank when those tend to fluctuate, they can uh, drop off to zero quite commonly because of the kind of advanced filtration that we tend to have in our tanks today. And it just kind of takes all that fluctuation as your bio load is changing in the beginning stages of a tank and you're figuring things out. Um, peg those levels and just keep them stable and it will just make everything else easier. The goal being that as the tank matures, you taper off dosing phosphate and nitrate and that's replaced with a larger fish load and other formats of nutrients such as phytoplankton and coral foods that I think are a little bit more natural. And I'm making a bunch of smaller dosing containers for the things like the nitrate and phosphate and, and perhaps some trace elements down the line that are half gallon and then the uh, two part dosing containers will be one gallon just to make replenishment and measuring a little bit easier. So there are a lot of great videos out there about dosing two part and I, I don't think uh, me making another one is <laughs> that productive. But what I will talk about is what I'm going to be dosing, which is uh, sodium hydroxide. And that is uh, essentially drain cleaner, which always when I think about it just strikes me as absolutely odd that I'm dosing drain cleaner to my reef tank. And in general, it's a direct replacement for dosing the more common uh, soda ash uh, alkalinity additive that you would get in bulk from bulk reef supply or elsewhere. And it has a, a, a significantly higher pH, which gives you a higher pH boost when using it, which is generally the reason people want to use it. 
If you do want to try sodium hydroxide, you know it's, it's obviously at your own risk, but it is very manageable as, as long as you're smart about it and you respect it. It's a little bit different animal than mixing up some of the other two parts. Uh, you need to wear gloves and eye protection and absolutely wear a mask uh, or a respirator. You don't want to breathe in any of the particles. It'll be a really bad day for you. So go into it knowing that and establish your routine. Don't kind of get lax and you know one day say oh I've mixed this up for the last couple of years it's always been fine I don't need my my mask or my gloves today no establish your routine stick to it be smart about it and respect it and and you'll be fine I've been doing it for a long time it's never been a problem but um, you do have to respect it So establishing a dosing regimen early on in an aquarium, I think is very, very useful in creating stability. Stability during the first year of an aquarium when uh, there's a lot of other things changing. You're adding new corals and new fish constantly usually, and uh, you're finding your maintenance rhythm. Your tank is, is kind of finding its own metabolic rhythm and, and changing constantly. So dosing can help create stability. It only really works though if you're testing regularly to monitor it. <laughs> so uh, learn to love water testing. I test alkalinity pretty much every day, sometimes every other day. Nitrate and phosphate early on I'm testing uh, probably three times a week at least. And calcium and magnesium uh, usually I test only once a week. And as your tank matures and you become more familiar with it, it becomes more stable and kind of a, a more known quantity, uh, you can definitely usually test less frequently. And after making all these small dosing containers, I realized I really didn't have a place to put them. <laughs> so I had to make a little shelf. Here is the finished setup. The large Kalkwasser Reservoir, which is about 14 gallons, sized for about two weeks if I'm dosing eventually about a gallon a day. And you notice here I'm dosing directly into the overflow, which is fantastic for mixing additives very quickly in, in kind of all the turbulent flow in an overflow box. But if you're going to do this, make sure you dose in between the stand pipes in the overflow where the water comes in rather than you know kind of dosing into the secondary drain which has less flow or into the emergency drain which has no flow at all. And to fill the Cockwasser Reservoir, I just have a direct line to my RO Reservoir. I can just crack a valve and, and fill that pretty quickly. And each one of these containers is hooked up to just one of the simple bulk resupply 1.1 milliliter a minute dosers and then controlled by the Apex. And make sure you calibrate these dosers from BRS because not a single one of these is actually 1.1 milliliter a minute. In fact, one of them is two milliliters a minute. So they can vary quite a bit. And the Cockwasser Reservoir is using a 50 milliliter per minute doser from BRS as well. So that's it for dosing. Thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you next time.